Let me tell you, people are mean to each other, but no voices are as mean as our own voices are to ourselves. Taylor Swift is one of the most successful global superstars. She rose to fame when she signed with Big Machine Records in 2005, became known as a country pop singer with the album Taylor Swift 2006 and Fearless 2008. Their singles, Teardrops on My Guitar, Love Story, and You Belong With Me were crossover successes on country and pop radio formats and brought Swift mainstream fame. But as you all know, the industry is a shady place filled with all kinds of things that could make your hair stand on its end. And people were worried that Swift would get mixed up with these shady people. Just, just for your whole world to completely crash off of a, a moment of sincerity or alcohol whatever or whatever it is to lose <laughs> those don't usually go together but yeah um, usually the alcohol yeah. rules out the sincerity part yeah. um, but but it was it was it that you had been drinking is that why you think you i mean there's probably lots of reasons but do you think you just decided i'm just going to get up and say something right now and i feel like in some ways like i'm a soldier of culture and i realized that no one wants that to be my job, and, and, and I'll never go on stage again. I'll never sit in a award show again, but will I feel convicted about things that really meant stuff to culture that constantly get denied for years and years and years and years? I'm sorry. I will. I cannot, I cannot lie about it in order to sell records. Well, I cannot, you know? I hope you don't mean that. I hope you'll be in an audience again. I hope you'll perform at all the, the shows, and you're, you're too important, and all of it is important in culture. Uh, you know, it's just an entertainment show. So don't ever say you're not going to sit in that audience again. We want to see you there. We want to see you entertain. I'm sure everyone's been keeping up with all the Diddy drama these past months. His involvement with women, them suing him for several disturbing crimes, including sexual assault, rape, and abuse. And all these things are alleged to happen at P. Diddy's infamous parties. Diddy's supposed secret freak-off parties have been making news after his homes were searched earlier this week. Reportedly due to allegations of sex trafficking, what is claimed to have happened at these parties? According to Lil Rod's lawsuit, Diddy, whose real name is Sean Combs, hit several cameras in his properties in LA and on Star Island. The document stated, while living and traveling with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones discovered that Mr. Combs had hidden cameras in every room of his home. The legal papers said, Combs has recordings of several celebrities, artists, music label executives, and athletes engaging in illegal activity. These individuals were recorded without their knowledge and consent. They also mentioned Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person who had attended his freak-off parties and his house parties. Hello everyone. Um, until further notice, I would not be performing at any gigs or anything like that. Um, for security reasons, my family, friends, and everyone close to me just feels like there's a lot of potential threats and everybody's just telling me what he's allegedly capable of and, you know, it's very scary um, for myself and, you know, it has me worried about my kids and, you know, just sleeping with anxiety and, and different things like that. So just moving forward, um, just going to pause on everything until we know that it's, it's, it's clear and safe for me to come back outside of work. I appreciate uh, you all for your love and support and everybody that knows me, etc. Thank you so much. Love. The lawsuit claims that Combs often had sex trafficking parties where illegal drugs were used. Reports say that the singer's supposed mule got caught with drugs at Miami airport and the rapper's homes in LA and Miami were searched by cops. TMZ got legal documents that say 25-year-old Brendan Paul was arrested on Monday. He faces two charges, one count for possession of suspected cocaine and another for suspected marijuana possession. The officers said they found contraband in Paul's bags, and tests showed these were illegal drugs, leading to his arrest. Paul got out of jail on bail. No proof has been found linking the drugs in Paul's bags to Diddy. Paul will go to court in April 24. Officials just outside of a gate, this on a street uh, near the Beverly Hills area, of course, we're following it very closely on Live Now from Fox. And of course, we were watching this. We didn't know exactly what we were seeing at the time. So this is just a little bit ago as they, you can see a crowbar to get through this gate initially as well. The long guns and a multitude of people 
as you'll see, they'll zoom out a little bit just to see the amount of force they are using to get inside this home. And of course, the complex in which this home sits is a very expansive one for the American rapper and producer. You can see them checking inside of a vehicle. We don't know exactly what is involved, if Diddy's even there. We don't know a ton of information about this at all, but this was dramatic video coming in of the Los Angeles home there, raided by Homeland Security. Some of those images there on the backs of them. We also saw uh, other images. I want to uh, kind of quickly move to what else we saw as people were led away, potentially in custody. Don't know who these individuals are, if they're related to Diddy in any way, but you can see them, a dramatic video from our Sky Fox team there in Los Angeles as we continue to cover this. And our Fox 11 team is there on the ground right now as we speak. Let's take you out to some of their coverage here as we follow this developing story out of Los Angeles. And then detain those three people inside. We haven't seen any signs of P. Diddy himself. Again, we're hearing that he is possibly in New York. Three states working in tandem, and they did not tell the officers who they were raiding. They went in tactical as they were instructed to. They didn't know they was raiding Diddy's house. The higher ups didn't tell anybody because they knew with Diddy being a, a fed informant that he had people in the force and they wanted to make sure that went through legit. So they ain't tell nobody whose houses they was going to. And that's why you see the guns. The, the cops didn't know that it was Diddy's house over there in Beverly Hills around the corner from uh, uh, the Playboy Mansion. They didn't know until they seen the kids. Jones also says that Diddy often partied with sex workers and underage girls. He alleges that Diddy made party goers sign agreements to keep quiet about what happened at the parties. Jones accuses Diddy of threatening and forcing young people into performing sexual acts for money. Jones also says he was made to hire sex workers for comms in Miami, which is illegal. Diddy also spiked drinks with date rape drugs and facilitating a sex trafficking venture. He allegedly paid Instagram influencer Jade Ramey a monthly stipend for sex work, according to a newly amended lawsuit against the embattled music mogul. Now imagine Taylor being there for all these illegal, incriminating parties. Being associated with this kind of man is no joke. But the star has yet to address the situation. To New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's camp. That's what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say that. Didn't, <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blige, they ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh, <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat, or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> and and, and what? Do you have money? What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah, uh -huh. I, had, I had like you know what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Fourteen years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Moving on to Diddy's ride or die, as they say, his longtime bestie. Jay-Z. Jay-Z and Diddy have been friends for a long time now. Their friendship dates back to the early 1990s and they've had their shares of ups and downs as each of them went through their separate legal troubles. Jay was facing charges for stabbing Lance, you and Rivera, meanwhile Diddy was on the hook for his involvement in the infamous club shooting, which saw him flee the scene of a Times Square hotspot alongside Jennifer Lopez. Both men avoided jail time and their friendship continued to grow. Diddy and Jay-Z's bond teamed up 
unfazed by their previous legal troubles. They were often spotted out together, and they regularly voiced support for each other in public. However, an incident that occurred in 2007 has resurfaced amidst assault allegations against Diddy. In a video from a performance at Scream Fest 07, Diddy appears to touch Jay-Z's butt, but their exchange is hard to make out. And since then, 50 Cent has continuously fired shots at comps and drags Jay-Z in the scandal. The rapper has been taking continuous pot shots at Diddy for the past few months owing to their professional rivalry. He posted a video about Diddy's neighbor reportedly revealing that comps brought a bus full of minors to his place late at night. Sean Diddy Combs' neighbor claims Diddy brings minors to his house by the bus load late at night. 26 March 2024, 50 Cent has posted on Instagram. Jay-Z has been accused of being a part of an elite gay pedophile club by an ex-user named Matt Wallace, who posted a video on Rumble posing questions such as why 50 Cent is targeting Jay-Z amid the Diddy controversy, or what kind of relationship did Sean Corey Carter, aka Jay-Z, have with with comms. The video by Wallace also talks about Carter's private island, which allegedly has an airport strip. The video hints that Beyonce's husband might be involved in the trafficking. There are no substantial reports as of yet to support these claims. However, Justin Bieber once accused Carter of some vile things. Matt Wallace posted, Rumors are circulating that Jay-Z is part of the gay pedophile elite. And finally, we get to the most controversial of them. Oh, Taylor Swift's longtime nemesis, Kanye West. Now, Kanye and Jay-Z have also been very good friends, but the pair had a fallout after Kanye's infamous 2009 VMA stage, Invasion, which upstaged both Taylor Swift and Jay's wife, Beyonce. The public first began to question if there was trouble between the two when Jay and Beyonce failed to attend Kanye and Kim Kardashian's wedding. Then in November 2016, he launched into a 17-minute speech at the St. Pablo tour concert in Sacramento, California, that asked Jay-Z not to have him assassinated, while Jay-Z's 2017 album release 444 laid down several glaring disses to Kanye. Kanye called his first album the college dropout, so this is an alert to fans that Jay wants to give his old pal a dressing down. The 47-year-old goes on, but you ain't the same, this ain't combaye, but you got hurt because you did cool by Ye. Soon after, Kanye hit back by taking all his music off Jay-Z's streaming platform title, announcing that he's done with streaming. But despite their past differences, Jay-Z was spotted inside with Kanye West at none other than P. Diddy's birthday party, whom he attended with Kim K. An insider tells people the two rappers and their wives sat pretty close together during the festivities. Sounds like three peas in a pod of you ask me. And at a P. Diddy party too. When I say Corey, I'm talking about Kathy White. Oh, yeah. That's what I was about to ask. Uh, Jay-Z's Jay pregnant Z's, mistress yeah. who died of an imaginary f***ing aneurysm, just like the woman who was best friends with Kim and Kimora who wrote the book, Bling, and died as soon as it made the bestsellers list. Who the f*** are these people supposed to go to? You can't go to the boss because the boss is f you. And the boss is boss? Don't get no f Can't go to the authorities. They're all bought and paid for. F you go when you get f over by the industry. Nowhere. That's where you go nowhere, which is where people like me Step in. Kanye is known for his good music, his work as a producer, and his true line Yeezy. But what he is best known for is his controversial opinions and his longtime beef with Taylor Swift. It all started when the rapper ambushed Swift's acceptance speech for video of the year at the 2009 MTV VMAs, for which he later apologized. Then in 2016, West released the track Famous with the controversial lyrics I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. Why? I made that bitch famous. Swifties were outraged and West's then wife, Kim K, came to his defense by sharing a phone call between West and Swift that seemingly proved the rapper and the cruel summer singer discussed the track ahead of its release. After going back and forth for multiple years including their release of Reputation, which was supposedly Swift's hit back at Kanye and Kim, Taylor reflected on the feud between her and West and Kardashian, calling it a career death. Make no mistake, my career was taken away from me, she said. 
you have a fully manufactured frame job and an illegally recorded phone call, which Kim K edited and then put out to say to everyone that I was a liar. Swift concluded, that took me down psychologically to a place I've never been before. I moved to a foreign country. I didn't leave a rental house for a year. I was afraid to get on phone calls. I pushed away most people in my life because I didn't trust anyone anymore. I went down really, really hard. Putting up a constant fight to defend yourself in a situation you didn't choose to be in has to be some of the most life-draining situations one could be in. But at least after a long war, the deed was settled. Well, sort of. Taylor has been associated with these three men before, but who knows what extent she's been spotted at their parties, hanging out but has yet to release a statement on the whole Diddy, Jay-Z and Connie situation. More and more celebrities are either names or out to expose P. Diddy and his associates. Because as the tea gets hotter and the situation becomes more crucial, who wouldn't want to protect his own back? But everyone should watch out. Diddy isn't going to let himself crash and burn by himself without taking people who are secretly involved down with him.